So Miguel, you're the fifth generation of the Torres family, who's been very well known for, for innovating with every single generation. Um, your father was obviously one of the first to really plant Cabernet Sauvignon here in the region, um, but you're kind of going back to your roots in some ways, or, or before your roots, with a project where you're rediscovering native varieties from the region. Can you tell us a bit about what your mission has been, along with your father in the last kind of 20 or so years? Yeah, well, no, we have to even go back to 30 years ago, no, uh -huh. when we started this project. Uh, we had this idea that maybe there were still uh, local ancestral vines that they were growing wild, maybe in the forest here in the Penedes or in Catalonia. And, uh, and we start asking to the vine growers if they had any of these varieties, checking the DNA. And after all these years, we have achieved to gather uh, 54 ancestral varieties. And then, uh, well, we, we have selected some, some of them because, uh, because of the quality, because we believe that they can make great wines, and also very specially because of the climate change. Excellent. So tell us a bit about the ones which really have worked then, because out of the 54 vines, and by ancestral vines, these are vines that haven't been identified anywhere else, yeah. um, so unique to Penedes, mm -hmm. um, and, and some of them you said have worked, some of them haven't worked. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Not, not because of being an ancestral vine, it seems that it's going to make a great wine. Our grandparents also uh, like to, to make uh, lots of wine and sometimes uh, it was not so great. But it's true that uh, among these varieties there were some that they were very unique and varieties that could make really excellent wines. And so these are the ones that we are really keeping. Right? Excellent. So and the first uh, one here, this white variety, is yeah. one that's very close to your heart. Can you tell us what this wine is and why you think this is worth res rescuing and why you've got so much planted now? <laughs> yeah, well, this is, uh, this is probably the, the, the king of the whites in terms of ancestral varieties that we have found. It's called Forcada. And, uh, and it's a variety that I sometimes say that if you try to make a wish list for a variety, it would uh, almost have everything. You know? It's a variety that uh, in general is very aromatic, it's very fragrant, it knows. Uh, in uh, mouth, it always has a, a great acidity, you know, we're talking about a lot of tension in the wine. Uh, it's a variety that ripes very late, which is great, uh, especially now that we are facing the effects of the climate change you know, and, and we, need, uh, we, we would like to wish the harvest to come a little bit later mm -hmm. no? to have a better ripening uh, but it has a great balance and uh, so, so far what we see is that it's a variety that it can make great young wines but also white wines that can have a fantastic aging potential. Excellent and we actually first tasted this about two hours ago so it's, it's lost its temperature, but it's still got this really vibrant acidity. It's got this really high acidity. You said naturally, can you tell us about the level of acidity that this wine has? No, this in tartaric acidity can be easily at eight. So uh, you can think that it's a variety that grows in the Mediterranean climate, but has acidity of a variety from the north of Europe, no, uh, yeah. of some parts of the north and coast, uh, west coast of Spain, no? So, uh, it's really fantastic, you know? so we, we believe that with this variety, even if the temperatures have certain increase, we can still make uh, fresh wines, aromatic wines that are very pleasing. Excellent. And your other way of combating, or not combating, your other way of facing climate change is not only with these native varieties, but moving up in altitude. So you also said that you've been planting this in much higher sites than before. Yes, now, now this variety is planted at 550 meters high. The Benedis, uh, but now we're going up to 750 meters high, and uh, this is something that we're doing also in our appellations. We're trying to find in higher elevations where the grapes can ripen a bit later and then have this freshness and this aromatic compound that uh, gives finesse to the wines. Excellent, fabulous. And then we've got a second native variety that you've rescued and, and rediscovered. Can you tell us a bit about this one? Yes, well, I love very much this variety. It's also from the Penedes. This, this was uh, found in a, in a small place in the higher mountains of the Penedes. It's called Moneo, okay? And uh, this is a variety that also, well, it's, it's, it's very open in nose. It has this very uh, nice uh, red uh, fruit, very, very intense, but also some kind of hints of spices there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, 
it has a lot of uh, color, although this particular wine, I, I'm always, like, like the style of wine that I like, maybe a, a, a bit more subtle and controlling more than a more of Antoshans and coloring in general. And uh, in mouth, I think that it has, has a lot of finesse and also like a bit like what we talking for Cala, it has this tension, it has mm. this acidity that starts in the mouth and you keep it if the, uh, even after many seconds that you have tasted this wine. Right? So it has the, uh, the spine of this wine is very much acidity, it's not the tannic structure on the side. Yeah. And it's, I, I think, very, very well, but still it has a freshness in the fruit. Absolutely. I think what's really exciting about these wines, not only because you're, you're rediscovering something that has been lost entirely, but that you're showing a totally different face to this region as well. How important do you think the identity of, of these ancestral vines will be in the future? Very much. I think that our future goes very much uh, going to our roots. No? Uh, when I think about the Penedes especially, that is uh, the oldest wine region in Catalonia and one of the oldest ones that we know in Spain today. You know? uh, well, in the past, uh, we used to have uh, hundreds of different varieties here. It was like a paradise, you know, between culture <laughs> here. And I think that, that the way to face the future is to recover these origins, to recover our past. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for sharing and we look forward to seeing how it develops. Thank you very much. <laughs> and well, yes. <laughs>